Hello. Hello. Uh, since we took all the money from crowdfunding and bought a remote island somewhere in the very Caribbean Sea, or very Caribbean, very Caribbean Sea, and. Uh, now we thought maybe we should uh, kind of at least give the impression to people that we're still working and uh, doing something. And so we uh, built an entire movie set that looks exactly to the detail. But it's just an editing set. It's uh, the editing set uh, that looks exactly like the office we had before and that we worked so hard in. But now it's just to kind of pretend. <laughs> <laughs> But it works, but it looks very realistic. Yeah, I, I hope so. I hope the, 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 the illusion works. Yes. Okay, uh, let's head on to some uh, More of, the, of the fake progress. The fake made. progress? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we prepared lots of fake we progress. We should be careful because some people will believe what we are saying now. You think? I think nobody <laughs> will believe anything we are saying. <laughs> okay, now comes the serious part. We took some of the money that you gave us in crowdfunding and bought amazing things with it. All the tools and equipment and technology and electronics that we simply couldn't afford before. And one of the things we bought was an Atom 3D stereolithography based 3D printer. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's, it doesn't work like the FDM based printing uh, technologies where you uh, deposit one uh, sausage of plastic on top <laughs> of each other. No, it uses uh, a beamer to kind of project each layer into a photo sensitive resin. I hope I explained it correctly. No, it's not <laughs> raisins, it's resin. Resin, of course. Raisins are old uh, grapes. Uh, maybe you can also <laughs> print food with the printer. Mm, might be. <laughs> Delicious mm. resin. Resin is a kind of toxic, um, I guess, if uh, it's I liquid. It is, yeah. no, maybe we shouldn't try that. But don't be confused, we will not uh, build the Axiom Beta cases with this 3D printer. We will only use it to prototype. Exactly. Case. Yeah. We received lots of questions about yeah, that. It will not be a plastic enclosure. It will most likely be, to the current plan, be made of solid aluminium. And for that we bought something else as well. Yes, we bought a, a CNC mill. Yeah, a big CNC mill. And because we forget all the time what we actually bought, we have written it down here properly, yes. so <laughs> we don't make any mistakes. The Tormach CNC mill, it's a kind of miniature production facility. and. That's what we plan to use to build the actual Axiom Beta enclosures, mm -hmm. made mm -hmm. from solid aluminium. And we also bought some tools, electronic equipment like uh, image sensors from Simosis, uh, a reflow oven, a DIY modded reflow oven, of <laughs> course, uh, a rework station, soldering station, the sensor board hardware is already complete. Mm -hmm. Excited. That was reflowed in a new reflow oven. Rain. Oven. Oven. <laughs> <laughs> and what else? We didn't buy that much yet. We <laughs> still have to buy a lot more. Well, it's the most important things. Yeah, that's true. That we need for the beta manufacturing. Yeah. We shipped all perks. Uh, yes, please let Almost us all perks. Some people still didn't uh, receive them. Maybe didn't receive them, but some people also didn't pay for shipping yet. Yes, so please check your spam folders or the email accounts that you were as associated with the PayPal, uh, with your PayPal account. It might have landed there and you didn't see it yet. Uh, I don't know. But we, please check. we will still send you whatever you are supposed yes. to get if you send <laughs> us the shipping cost. Yes, please <laughs> check. <laughs> yeah, currently with. Uh, Electronics design and PCB manufacturing, we have a delay of around three weeks already, mostly because over Christmas nobody dared to send us the electronic components that mm. we ordered in mid-December already. They are arriving now, around one month late, and normally they send it in within the same week, basically. <laughs> and But we also have made a few modifications to the concepts that also cost uh, not delays, but we had to redo some things, like the new PCB stack design. The original PCB stack design was this, where the shields are kind of formed around the lens mount. But uh, we had to add another board to the stack. So we had a second revision, version 2, that was like this, and which also moved the uh, shields back by one kind of layer from the PCB stack. And 
we did another revision now where we uh, changed the orientation of the IO shields, the extension shields, and they are not located on the side of the front of the lens, uh, of the uh, camera anymore, mm. <laughs> but they are oriented to the side and the back uh, to the right here. This will also extend the case. It will make the case, which was supposed to be uh, around this size, to maybe one or two centimeters longer to the back. But it will allow us to uh, place the connectors not just on the side, which could get in the way when you're attaching a grip handle or mm. when you have it in a rig, but we can also uh, have the connectors to the top, to the bottom and to the back, which is likely the direction <laughs> that most people want to actually attach their connectors to. And yeah, for that we had to, uh, in, the, uh, in the process of redesigning part of the electronics that we already had pretty much finished, but we shouldn't take that much longer than originally expected. It also enhances the airflow a little bit, so... Yes, and uh, for this case we don't need a dedicated connector for the I.O. shields because we uh, decided to go for a kind of a PCI extension <laughs> slot design where the actual PCB is the connector and slides into a PCI Express uh, 36 connector. Very convenient. Yeah, that makes it a bit cheaper for the shields. And uh, we also added a new power management PCB that we didn't anticipate originally. And what else do we have? We have notes because I forget pretty much everything <laughs> I write down somewhere. Well, this will be next step. Yeah. Okay, so the next steps after the hardware is complete is getting a still single image. still image from the image sensor. And yeah, that will be kind of the transition from when the hardware is complete to starting with drivers and software. But first we need to focus on the hardware, so exactly. everything else may work in the future. Yeah. Will work. Yeah. Currently we use a 3D printed, uh, not exactly enclosure, but kind of a bracket that holds the sensor and the lens mount together. It's not really something that encloses the hardware, but something that we can uh, without any further delays attach a lens to the image sensor and get first images out of that. And then we will continue uh, with software and HDMI and running moving images and so on. We'll focus on, on the proper camera itself now and after this is done we will take care of the stretch goals that we announced at the crowdfunding. Campaign. Yeah, that were uh, the active uh, Canon lens control Yes. The, the 4K recording. The 4K recorder and hardware. And the remote. And the uh, Axiom remote, exactly. Which I'm not sure what the official name is. Right it's now. now called Axiom remote because some oh. people found the name dictator kind of offensive. Why? I don't know. That's what it does. Yeah, it dictates <laughs> the camera what to do. Mm, well, <laughs> And on the website, we recently ran an article that Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant. Hugh Grant uh, attended the no, uh, joint project. Really? Uh, it's a very nice uh, horizon outlook <laughs> for the next <laughs> years. <laughs> no, what we actually mean is that we got an EU grant. Uh -huh. oh. mm. And that uh, kind of covers the development or the, the research and piloting of development of the Axiom Gamma, which is supposed to come after the beta. But now we had to kind of start developing that part a yes. bit early because the EU has tight deadlines and wants you to start immediately. And but this will not interfere. No, we beta. will still uh, focus on the beta first. And we also have the different project partners in the EU consortium that uh, each are responsible for a particular area of development. So mm -hmm. we don't have to do all the development ourselves and we can still focus on the beta. Yes. And mm -hmm. we will still incorporate as much feedback and as much ideas from the beta as of we course. originally intended from early developers uh, mm -hmm. and early adopters and developers and into the Axiom Gamma in the end. Mm -hmm. And the project will start in March. the middle of March and will go for 15 months. And that way, the future of the project is for now secured for at least two years, basically. Yes. And we will see half, yes. how it continues <laughs> from there because the EU project only focuses on uh, research and development of the Exxon Gamma. So if we actually take the results from the research and 
make a camera available for purchase and uh, manufacture it in larger volumes. Yes. That's still something we have to decide after the EU project. That's not part mm -hmm. of the EU project in the end. Yes. What's the next point? My brain is... Uh, oh, yes. We Last year we announced this will be the last year without us attending NAB in <laughs> Las Vegas. <laughs> and apparently it is, because this year we will be attending. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, or not unfortunately, but we rather like to spend the money from crowdfunding and from the EU to actually develop something and not for uh, getting the biggest booth we can possibly afford it. We have to spend everything on the island. <laughs> exactly, the island already <laughs> took all the money, <laughs> so we can't afford the booth at yes. NAB. So we got, uh, thankfully, for to one of our project partners in the EU consortium, mm -hmm. a tiny space uh, in a shared booth from Dance. And where it will be exactly, we will announce <laughs> in time because I have <laughs> no idea. But it's a small booth and we will be there and we will present something, likely an Action Beta prototype. Ooh. So, yeah, first I'm time curious. the camera <laughs> travels to the United States. Great. Yeah. And now we come to your questions that you have proposed to us and we have to read them from the screen because we, we sorted them through them and selected the best ones because we had so many questions that we would still be <laughs> here tomorrow if we answered <laughs> them all in detail but the first question is will there be an update on the expected cost of the beta to backers okay no the problem is no <laughs> we <laughs> the <laughs> problem is no <laughs> the answer is no because we still don't know how much in the end it would cost to manufacture the like the metal parts and stuff like that. The prototype is currently progressing, but uh, the expected cost of actually manufacturing them, we will know more about once we actually start manufacturing them. <laughs> <laughs> Great answer. Yeah. So don't expect any changes. If there are, we will inform you immediately. Yes. Okay, next, next question. question. When will the Axiom Beta and the Gamma be for sale, Sebastian? That's a very good question. For you crowdfunding backers out there, the camera will be for sale, especially for you in the respective months that you backed, the batch number to the <laughs> corrected month. Uh, from April to August, we pre-sold 100 cameras per month. Maybe we'll have slight delays in April, maybe <laughs> we'll be slightly delayed, but we are confident that we won't get any further delays. For everyone else, who didn't back us in the crowdfunding campaign, they will have to wait until fall 2015, until all crowdfunding backers receive their cameras, That's to actually fair. order their camera for the full retail price, of mm. course. Yes. The when will the Axiom Gamma be for sale? The Axiom Gamma. Since the EU project will start in March and go for 15 months, it mm -hmm. will end in around fall 2016. And that will be the time when we actually decide if we want to start manufacturing and selling of the Axiom Gamma. So don't expect it any sooner than that, at the end of 2016, yes. at the earliest. Yes, we still have to wait for all the, the beta feedback and to integrate that into the final product. Because the Axiom Beta is, as you know, they sold as uh, an early adopter kit and a developer kit, and the Axiom Gamma should already be one step further and an actual kind of end user ready exactly. product that you can just take out and start with production, basically. Mm -hmm. That is true. What's the next question? The next question is, I have purchased a perk for the Axiom Beta with a 16 mm sensor. As it turns out, I now have the money available to go for the 35 mm version. Is it possible to switch to the other sensor size? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, all the watches in crowdfunding amounted to the same price, you can still decide which sensor you actually want to get at the time that you actually order your XM Beta camera. But please contact us and tell us if you want to do that. Yeah, we will kind of give a big order call and then you can, we're setting up a web shop or some solution mm -hmm. where you can do that online and then select all the accessories and the options that we have, like the sensor size. And yeah, yes. that will happen sometime in March, most likely, mm -hmm. for the first batch in April. Great. Yes. What's the next question? The next question <laughs> is, how is the user to know that there are problems with the boot process? 
Will the relevant status information be output via the HDMI or SDI ports for display on any attached monitor? Uh, no, the relevant status information will be accessible uh, like in any Linux system via the system messages. You can log in with Ethernet for SSH access, for example, or there's a dedicated serial console port where you even get a status output uh, during the boot process. But the HDMI and video SDI signal will be just the uh, clean feed or the overlays from the actual video, real-time video. But is it possible to print out uh, an error message or something over uh, the HDMI? If or? somebody wants to create a software that does that, mm -hmm. that is of course possible because it's open source. But we <laughs> intend it only for actually using the camera and not kind of debugging it because developers normally have all the tools and the access to those kinds of features of course, anyway yes. if they need to. As a design developer skill. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we also have three status lights on the micro set, a green one that indicates power, a red and a blue one which we control through software so we can light it up for certain conditions or yes. so displaying certain kinds of information that we kind of think is relevant at the time. But there will also be buttons on the case. Yeah, and that leads us to the next question, I yes. think. Oh yeah. Maybe I read this one now. Okay. Uh, How is the x Peter turned on and off? Is it simply a question of pulling the power cable and removing the batteries? Or is that likely to damage the unit? Actually, for the x Alpha prototype, it was exactly like that. Like you plugged in the power cord, <laughs> it booted, and you wanted to turn it off, you pull out the power cord. <laughs> <laughs> but for the x Peter, it will be a bit different. It will behave in a similar way to uh, your ATX uh, soft power on off on a computer where you can like press it once to turn it on then keep it pressed for three seconds to shut it off or you can reboot and that way we have kind of buttons that we can use a configure to how the Axiom beta should react to going on off. User. Yes. Great. Perfect. Next question. The next does question is does Axiom plan to include liquid cooling? Sounds <laughs> cool, <laughs> but currently no. <laughs> it seems kind of dangerous. Yeah, but is there a coolant liquid leak somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> a no. leak. Uh, currently, uh, we do just uh, air ventilation cooling. Maybe you remember the XM Alpha had a really huge fan mm, on yes. top. We also received lots of questions about yeah, the huge fan. <laughs> And that worked so well because it cooled the sensor down to uh, two degrees above room temperature without even doing that much sophisticated heat pipe or heat sink behind the sensor. It was just blowing lots of air through the <laughs> sensor basically. And for the XM Beta, we will shrink the fan a bit. Yes. But the concept of flowing air from the top down to the bottom and behind the image sensor and behind the other electronics is still the current go-to concept. And we are also still evaluating a different concept for the Axiom Gamma. Maybe it will involve liquid cooling in some mm. way, but currently it's not on the <laughs> agenda. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have to use a, a bottle of water then? Yeah, you can throw an entire bucket of water over it Great. and cool it. I, I don't know about operation, but it will definitely be very cool in the end. <laughs> <Super>. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Maybe you can build an underwater camera case Ooh. for some point. It only works very <laughs> shortly <in> underwater. <laughs> okay, what's the next question? Next question is, what if there will be a new image sensor that is much better than the currently used one? Ah, yeah. Uh, since everything is open and even modular, we can basically accommodate every sensor that is openly documented yes. because that's important for sharing <laughs> the open hardware and the sharing the documentation. So is there if there is a new one that's much better than the one we're currently using, we can just replace the image sensor module and still reuse all the rest of the camera and with minimal work effort have a completely new image sensor. So that's not it's not a problem. No. It will be a bit of work, but yeah. it's not impossible <laughs> basically. Yeah. But currently it's not plug and play, but it's yeah, it requires a bit of fiddling and replacement. Yes. But yeah. Plug and play. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, currently we use the image sensor that we kind of evaluated is the best option currently available on the market. But if the future brings us even better sensors, we are also <laughs> open to use <laughs> them. Yes. If they are open to be used by us. <laughs>
But what 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 is the current sensor? The current sensor is uh, CMV twelve thousand from CMOSIS. It does four K at a super forty five millimeter image diameter, and from what we evaluated on the market, there are only two manufacturers who even wanted to open or share their documentation. CMOSIS and, and the other one was Kodak that was then yeah. bought by TrueSense and which was now bought by I think on semiconductor. <laughs> uh, but they still publish all the data sheets without requiring anyone an NDA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but if there are the image sensors that are ready to share their data sheet and documentation, <laughs> contact us. Yeah, <laughs> please do. <laughs> we will buy lots of sensors from you. <laughs> <laughs> Is there going to be a basic shoe mount on top of the camera? I need it for microphone or monitor or other accessories. Do you need it? I am the one sending in the mm. question now. <laughs> uh, no, it does not have a hot shoe mount for now, but it will have threaded holes on the back side, on the back plate. So Even on top maybe? Even on top maybe, so that you can use any simple video accessories yeah. too. And since we're still in the, the process of actually defining how the XMPTA enclosure will be and where mount holes are and yes. uh, how it's all fit together, the more you participate now and the more you tell us what you need, mm -hmm. the more likely it will end <laughs> up exactly like you want it. You can do <laughs> it via our wiki or our lab. Yeah, that's a good, a good keyword. Yes, exactly. you. Uh, maybe you've seen that we launched a new kind of web platform, the Apertus Lab. And it's kind of a mix between a forum and a task management program where you can start by expressing a wish that can be whatever you wish for, <laughs> like a hot shoe mount maybe. Yes. We you link can it in the video, the, the introduction exactly. video you made. Yes, and uh, you just tell us what you want. We then discuss it. Everyone can participate <laughs> in discussing what makes sense, where the Schumann should be. Maybe you know where the parts are coming from and how what's important for them. And then we can integrate it into a concept and take the task, because everything in the lab is organized as a task, even if it starts from a wish, to then it can become a feature. And at some point, it will be implemented. And even if it's a software feature, it can be used to report bugs at some point. Mm -hmm that we in return can uh, fix and supply patches then. So it covers the entire development process and the entire community and different professions. So you don't need to be a software developer just to use the lab. You can even use it if you just want to kind of express your opinion about features you want to see in the camera. Exactly. Perfect. Great. Next question. Uh, will you offer Axiom Beta to Gamma upgrade or can I use my Beta voucher as well on the Gamma? This is a question we have received lots of times. Yes. Um, yeah. The problem is that we didn't even start the Axiom Gamma <laughs> development and we didn't even start the EU project now. And the EU project will take uh, one and a half years. And so everything we predict now will be evaluated during the process of the project. And so whatever it will end up being in the end, how should we uh, promise that right now? That's the We can't problem. really yeah. promise anything. So the we simply can't uh, kind of offer the upgrade. Or we will offer upgrade, but we can't accept the vouchers for the XM Gamma because what if we don't do an extra like some <laughs> gamma then because we find out during the EU project that it will be too expensive or not viable in some way. No, we will do it. Of course, we, we, will, we will do the EU project. We will find a way to Hopefully. make it happen. Yeah. But we will keep you updated on if you can upgrade the bit. We will definitely allow upgrading by recycling or by yes. reusing. So from the Exum Beta, you, a lot of parts can be reused in the Exum Gamma. But not, not the most important important part because they are just uh, in a developer stage right now. Yeah, but for example, the image sensor, which is kind of the, the most expensive part That's of the XMP, will most likely be kind of reusable. So if you get the XMP now and then upgrade to the XM Gamma, you will likely save a lot of money because you have the image sensor already mm -hmm. and you bought it at cost if you're a crowdfunding <laughs> backer. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Did we note anything else for here? Uh, I think that's it, yeah. Great. Let's go on to the next question. It's the last question already. How crazy is that? <laughs> uh, will the Axiom Beta be compatible with 
any third party 4K HDMI 12G SDI recorder. Um. <laughs> <laughs> we will soon know that, hopefully, when the Exxon Beta is ready and when those recorders actually ship. Yes. Because I think the Atomos Shun is shipping I think now or last week. They already some people already have. Okay, so as soon as they are available, we will grab one mm -hmm. and see if we can kind of tune the output signal so those recorders receive it properly. We will have an official list, that kind of list compatibility with all <laughs> devices that we tested. But for now, all we can promise is that we will test it. Yes, so if, far. You, if you want to test us anything first, feel free to send us the particular Of gadget. course, yeah. We will send it back, of course. <laughs> 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 yeah, but for now we can't promise anything. And the first uh, I.O. shield that we will develop is the triple full HD HDMI shield. Yes. HDMI shield. And that should work with pretty much any HDMI recorder accessory that understands the industry standard HDMI and the uh, standards for full HD in 25 for DAP. Yes. Yeah. So the next question is, how will Magic Lantern participate in the development of Axiom? Yes. Uh, since we're still in the hardware development phase, uh, collaboration is kind of difficult here still, but as soon as the hardware is complete, uh, several Magic Lantern developers will receive their hardware. Mm -hmm. Maybe because they back the project and purchase <laughs> the voucher, <laughs> or because we want them to have the actual hardware and start development. And from then on, we will see what exactly and how, what areas exactly we can collaborate on. But I already have several in mind here. But we have to wait until the actual hardware is complete. Mm. Yes, of course. In the hands of the developers, then. <laughs> Anything else? No. Uh, if there are any other questions, so if still anything is unclear that we said now because we prepared <laughs> it in a such confusing way, <laughs> don't hesitate to email us. Uh, we will add the link to yes. this video where you can contact us, send us an email, and we are happy to answer even more questions via email. Some of the questions that you sent us uh, for this particular video, we add to the F uh, frequently asked questions on, on, the website. on the website, and you can review or uh, see them there. Yes, exactly. That's it for us. Thank if you for watching. you like this, let us know. Then we will maybe <laughs> do another video sometime in the future. Mm -hmm. If you don't like it, might not. Prete <laughs> pretend you <laughs> did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so much for now. See you soon. Thank you. Thank you.